All right, and I will officially welcome everyone. Um, I'm Jessica Jordan. I'm the Education Librarian at Slippery Rock, and I'm here to welcome everyone on behalf of our team today. So I would like to introduce our speaker. If I admit one last person here. Um, it's pandemonium, work, workplace decision making during a pandemic. And today we're here with Mrs. Virginia Stevens, uh, assistant library, assistant, excuse me, university librarian. Uh, Potomac State College of West Virginia University. So welcome and thank you for your presentation today. Um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, as um, Mrs. Stevens has said, she is more than happy to have you unmute yourself and contribute uh, verbally. However, if you're more comfortable or don't have a microphone and would like to participate via the chat, um, Nick and I will be overseeing chat and we'll make sure that we share your questions and comments as well. So I'm still admitting a few people. I do have chat on. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Ginny. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about this. Um, remember everybody, you can unmute, you can tap the space bar, you just yell, hey, and I'm gonna try to get as much on my screen as I can see. Can everybody see that? We good? We're good. Guys. <laughs> I'll see you, Virginia. Okay, good, good, good. Because I can't see anybody anymore. So um, feel free to share what's worked for you and what didn't as we go through. And I'm really excited to hear from you. We will make this pretty short and sweet today. I wanted to start off by explaining what happened last March, I was in Florida. I was enjoying my spring break, but not for long because as interim director of the Mary F. Shipper Library, I was suddenly back on duty. So no spring break for me or anybody else, right? We had up to five hours of Zoom meetings every single day, and I just spent the whole time making plans and then changing them. Um, I learned that I have no interest in being a college administrator. <laughs> I learned I hate managing people remotely. And I also learned one really important thing, that making effective decisions and taking decisive action can turn a crisis into your time to shine and into your library's time to shine, okay? So I started not shining, I was whining right? <laughs> For three weeks, I was whining to the Dean of WVU Libraries, Karen Diaz, saying, Karen, no one's telling me what to do. No one's making any decisions. No one's sharing any plans. And Karen said, well, you got to accept that nobody knows what's going on. So you've got a time right now. You've got a window of opportunity. You know what's best for your library. You make the plan." you share the plan. And I said, oh my gosh, that's what I'm definitely going to do. And I mean, her words of wisdom just completely changed my entire mindset. So really excited about that. Um, of course, uh, they just started cutting the grass outside my window. Hang on. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so, yes, let's see, where were we? Oh, Karen was so incredibly helpful, and that's what she told me. I, she said to take the bull by the horns and make the decisions because somebody has to, okay? And if you step up and take control, tell bosses and administrators, this is what's going to work best for my library. You know what's going to work best for your library, okay? And then, whether it's your department, your area, your students, we're not saying be a bull. We're not saying railroad other people. 
but we are saying to make a plan, stay in control, and communicate your plan to the people above and below you, all right? So, I've got some tips here, and one of them is don't let fear override common sense. You've got to realize that there will be places in the hierarchy where that's going to happen, both above and below you, no matter what level you're at. But you need to let common sense rule and dictate your policy and procedure, not fear. So for instance, they have a billion stickers that we can put on our stairwells. But at Potomac State College, we only have one stairwell. Anybody else like that? One stairwell. So it's not worth putting a whole bunch of stickers on the floor everywhere because people are just going to be walking into each other. They kind of all drive so they know to stay on the right and it's going to be the same with the stairwells. We don't need to muck it up. If we had a huge library and a whole bunch of people, we could definitely mark a stairwell up, a stairwell down. Who's done that? I'm sure some of you have, but you know, we can't do it. So we're not going to mindlessly throw stickers down, which just confuses the situation. We're going to let common sense rule. Now, another really important thing is to know your facts. Gather the information before you make a decision. Find out what others have done and find out what their results were. Talk to people you respect, whether these people are in your library, in another library, or in another business altogether. Um, an outside perspective can be extremely beneficial, so remember that. I have a nurse friend I was talking to, and we were trying to figure out um, in our library how to keep certain, now this was over the summer, how to keep certain tables, let someone know, let the maintenance crew know that someone sat there. And she said, oh, at our hospital, we have little laminated cards for clean and dirty. And the students who might not be able to really take time to wipe the table down at the end of the night, they might just leave a card on there that says dirty so that the maintenance crew knows to get that. Now we got that from a nurse at a hospital. We haven't actually implemented that because we haven't needed to yet, but I already heard about that. Definitely listen to people in other industries that you know and respect because this is the perfect opportunity for your library to lead the change rather than follow kicking and screaming, okay? You wanna develop a reputation for being a yes man or woman, okay? I want you all to start saying, yes, we will try that instead of no, we already tried that. If it didn't work the first time, figure out why and tweak it so it will work. It's time to make your library as space back into a player. This is the perfect opportunity because we're moving away from library as space, but suddenly this semester, every commuter student's got to do a Zoom before they have an in-person class. The library is going to be a great place for that. Say yes. Find a way to make it work. Administrators need solutions. They're as lost as everybody else. Provide them solutions. They're desperate. And if you become a yes man or woman and you're creative and open-minded with your solutions, people will start coming to you for help. Faculty is definitely coming to us for content. Think, where does my campus have gaps? Where does your campus have gaps? And fill them. Become the voice thread expert or the Piazza expert or the Google Classrooms or even the Zoom expert. Be a go-to person and a yes man. Project a positive, calm, capable attitude. I have trouble with the calm attitude because I blow up. I get, I get back on track, but I blow up. Try not to blow up. You just want to always be the calm go-to person. I found when I became director, that was in, what, Nick, maybe June of like the year before, this, this past, you know, 2019, I guess, we had a whole team who immediately went into yes mode because we suddenly decided that that was the way to be. <laughs> we all wanted to be that way, but our old director was getting a little curmudgeonly and, and um, once we had a fresh start, we became the yes team and it showed. Um, the few times I said no, 
No one even questioned me. And I'm sure that we are all used to the library getting railroaded somehow, right? <laughs> uh, we had a joke a couple, a couple months ago about uh, on one of our calls with all the librarians, we had a joke about the fact that uh, what's the club that everybody wants to host now? Um, they asked us to get rid of all our books and put eSports on the second floor. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to be a yes man or woman that much, right? But if you say yes, most of the time, you're going to develop a reputation as a can-do person. So the very few times that you must say no, no one's even going to challenge you because they know that if there's any way you could make it happen, you've established a reputation, you've established a track record of making it happen, of coming up with creative solutions. So definitely another tip, be a yes man or woman. Okay, don't flex your muscles. This is not the time to revisit petty grievances. It's not the time to say no because you finally got a little bit of power and you can. This is the time to be strategic, be a team player, and think of all the ways you can contribute to the bottom line. And every time I say you, I definitely mean you as an individual, but I mean you with your students, you in your area, you in your department, or you as a leader, all right? Because it's really important right now to come through looking good not looking like the persnickety old librarian um, uh, stereotype that we so often hear. We want to be good team players. We want to be good doobies and we want to lead rather than follow at this time. You need to consider that you can use bureaucracy and autonomy in your favor, okay? Some of you come from big libraries. I saw the names of everybody. Some of you come from smaller libraries. If you've got that small library, you're going to be nimble. You're going to have easy access to decision makers. Take advantage of that. If you're in a large bureaucracy, you might have trouble receiving permission for something. One way I used to get around that, and Nick did too, is we would just include in our email, we want to do this, 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 and this. If we don't hear from you by Friday, we'll assume everything's a go. <laughs> All of a sudden, we were getting to do everything we wanted to do because people who didn't get back to us were wrong and scared to admit they didn't get back to us. There's definitely ways to work the system in a bureaucracy. We are in a very, and so is Mary Strife, we're in a very unique position at Potomac State and at WVU Tech in Beckley because we're kind of our own autonomous area while we're also part of a bureaucracy. So I'm going to give you an example of how you can make that work. Um, our due date was like, we weren't allowed to send a message and, or run a report till 30 days after someone's book was due. Well, that's just crazy, especially when people are graduating and we don't even send them a message until a month after they've graduated. So we called WVU and we said, hey, we need to reset this due date. Uh, the, the, you know, notification date from like three days after the book is due from 30. They said, oh, we can totally help you with that. Yes. First, you have to form a committee and then you discuss it and then you take it to your department director and then you take it to the dean and then you take it to the dean of the libraries in Morgantown and then you make sure your administrators are on board and then tell us that all that's happened and we will make the change for you. I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay, thank you. Hung up, went and talked to my boss. She said, yeah, three days sounds good. I waited two days and called the giant faceless bureaucracy back knowing I would get another person on the phone. And I said, hi, at Potomac State, we formed a committee and went up the chain and told the deans and got permission and we want to change our due date notice from 30 days to three days. And the person went, hang on flipped a switch and changed it. Use any way you can to get done what you wanna do, okay? I mean, I'm not saying completely skirt the rules. Obviously, we wanna follow rules, but when you know it's gonna be a giant headache and you can get it done in a simple way, go for it. Be seen as a leader and a decision maker. Now, as much as we wanna be leaders and decision makers, 
we need significant input from those at the lowest levels of our institutions. If you're a decision maker, you need to consult your boots on the ground workers. See how it works both ways? Um, I'm telling the administrators here in our gang today to consult the boots on the ground workers. And a few slides ago, we were telling the boots on the ground workers to take the bull by the horns and make their own plans. If everybody has this can-do attitude, we're gonna meet in the middle. And that works within the libraries and up and down the whole chain of university administration as well, excuse me. So it's important, the people on the ground, the people on the front lines at the front desk are the ones most in touch with the reality of this situation, especially in a pandemic like this. Managers, if you get a decision from above, before you give any feedback, you throw it further down the chain and run it by everybody and say, how is this? How can we make it work better? And when you go back to your bosses, no matter what level you are, you're gonna go back with a yes, we can, and here's how, and here's an even way to make it better. We're gonna be those can-do yes men and women. So make sure you've got buy-in from everybody up and down the chain. This is so weird that I can't see anybody. I do not thrive in this atmosphere. Does anyone have a question? Anyone have a comment? Okay, I'll keep going. Plan, make a plan, have it ready. The plan you're looking at now changed my life. Right now, administrators higher up the chain are completely overwhelmed. If you provide them with detailed solutions, this is a time like never before that your library, your department, your area can shine, okay? Make a plan. Get input from your coworkers, colleagues, and like we said, people from other areas or industries and get ideas to make a concrete plan. Are you gonna to have to change that plan? Oh yes, daily, yes, hourly, maybe, but have the plan. Um, formalized communications, okay? I'm not saying this in a create an email and copy 30 people on every single email, no, no, no. But create a formal communication and make sure that you become a go-to person who's known for providing a solid concrete plan. I learned this years ago. I was a drug rep for Merck and I had the most easygoing, wonderful boss in the world. And on my first one-on-one -on -one with him, I was maybe 23 years old, 24 years old. My first one-on-one, -on -one, I was just ready to, for him to ride along with me to the doctor's office and then we were gonna go to lunch. That's what everybody did. It was really cool. The doctors are especially nice to you because your boss is along. And two or three days before my first ride along, another kind of middle level manager came up and she said, you ready for your ride along? And I said, yeah, it'll be great. And she said, you got all your numbers ready? I said, I don't have anything ready. I can't imagine Joe wants to see all that. And she goes, he's not gonna say he wants to see it, but he wants to see it. Get your zip code reports, get your uh, you know, hospital data, get everything together. Talk about your territory, talk about the changes in your territory. Make an actual report. Guys, I've been doing that ever since. And the reason I started telling you about something that happened way back then is because honestly, I had one-on-ones with the Dean while I was the library director for a year. And in my last one-on-one -on -one with him, he said, I have been a pleasure to meet with. I'm always prepared. And out of every one-on-one -on -one meeting he has, he enjoys and feels that two of them are constantly productive. And mine was one for the whole year and he was sorry to see me go. Make a concrete plan and share it. Formalize your communications. It really makes an impression on people. All right, this is the perfect opportunity for your library to be the change, to lead the change, rather than follow kicking and screaming and whining and crying. You wanna develop a good reputation. And of course, since, the pan since it's a pandemic, you have to be ready to switch tracks. We have changed our plan a billion times. <laughs> I think we're going to change our plan again. I'm hoping not. I don't want to go online, but you never know. Be ready to switch. 
go in your office, scream into a pillow, freak out at home, yell at your family, and then buy them all drinks, but definitely exude a calm, capable demeanor at work. It's very difficult for someone like me, <laughs> but very, very important. Every crisis presents an opportunity, okay? Um, Nick can speak to this. We just had some English professors meet in the library and I was, I'm an in-person person. I was sitting there moaning and complaining that, you know, I was only gonna be able to go into so many classes and there are instructors who are meeting all online. And I just don't wanna go into 8 million Zoom classes with uninterested students, disinterested students. And the English professor said, why don't you guys launch a, a Zoom database workshop session? And you could just have like three or four general sessions and any student could join and all the English professors can invite their students. What a great idea. <laughs> this might really work. It's something we're going to pursue. I just, I don't know, you guys might be thinking, what an idiot that you didn't already think of that, but I did it because we're very class oriented and we don't have to be. Let's take this crisis and turn it into an opportunity to try to reach more students. Same with our virtual academic majors fair. And this actually didn't pan out, but I wanted to talk about it because it was a great opportunity. We always have an academic majors fair every year where the different departments will meet in different centralized locations. The faculty will hang out for about two hours and you're supposed to come meet your faculty and ask questions. They're always poorly attended, really poorly attended. Well, our Dean of Student Life said, hey, why don't I have this online? The students can join and talk to professors. And since they can do it from their room when they're bored and not supposed to be having any activities, they might feel more comfortable asking questions about, you know, their major in general and this semester in particular. Oh my gosh, you guys, the faculty didn't bite and we didn't end up doing it. But I'm wondering if it would have been way more of a successful majors fair than we usually had. I, I'm not a Zoom person. I have, what are they calling it, Zoom fatigue? I'm Zoomed out. I don't like it. I need, I'm freaking out right now because I can't see any of you all or anything. I can't even see people's faces. But let's, let's take it for what it is. Let's make what we can with it. Maybe I can reach more students. Same with videos. If you have an interest in making videos, Man, start making some videos. Go to your administration, go to your boss, go to your department head and say, you need any how-to videos? The whole university is pushing media site, ours is anyway. You can also post them on YouTube. Just take something that interests you and run with that, run with that. There's so many opportunities right now for people to shine. Well, I wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions, comments, and to go back. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hopefully we have some, some comments here. Um, here. Gina Chatton asks uh, if you're able to share a PDF of the plan. Sure, I can do that. Let's see. Should I do that now or can I just email it to her? Uh, you could probably just email it to her. Oh, that would be wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I'll type my email in here. Anybody else? I, I would love to hear uh, any, any other directors, anyone try to make some decisions and get no buy-in and get no feedback? Or did anyone like really forge ahead and, and have some success? Tell us about it. Yes, please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, share. There's 30 people here. Someone either made a good decision or made a bad decision. I'm looking for some names to pick one. Monica Brooks, what's going okay. on with you? I was going to jump in if oh, I can cut off Monica. Heather, go ahead. Tell us. So I was actually on our fall planning team um, in terms of figuring out everything for the semester, which was a great place to be. Um, and it was overwhelming at times, but it was, it was a good situation to find myself in. But one thing that became very clear is that there was no communication between what I would call our 
extra um, co-curricular service points. And so one of the things we talked about was, well, you know, if the learning center makes these decisions about capacity or how they're going to do their services and the library makes these decisions and the career center makes these decisions, so on and so forth, the students are going to be even more confused than they're already going to be because everything is different. So what we did is we pulled together the heads of all of those service departments and we had two or three meetings and we said, okay, we made um, like a Google check-in form that people could use and adopt if they wanted to record who came into their spaces. We said, okay, we're setting capacity according to these guidelines. We are in fact removing, you know, any casual seating. We are, you know, doing our distance, um, social distancing of other seating. And because of that, our students now have a consistent experience, whether they're going to the learning center, the library, um, the career center, uh, student life, wherever it might be, and, and that has been really great. And we are also supporting one another so that instead of somebody saying, I can't believe you can't get into the library at seven o'clock on Tuesday, they're saying the library had to look really critically at what they could and couldn't do safely. So over these first two weeks, that's how it is. If you have concerns, talk to the library staff. Heather, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And for those of you, I want to follow up with something. Um, we begged, we begged for years to get on what you're talking about, like some kind of deans and directors group. You know, that we at Potomac State, they sometimes have some things closely held to their vests. Well, I finally wrangled my way onto the fall planning committee. And guess what? Because everything is such a disaster right now, they accidentally added me to all the committees <laughs> and now Seth is on them because once you're on them they kind of don't take you off so really do everything you can to wrangle an invitation to that upper level thinking at this point because everything's in such disarray this is the time to make your move this is the strategic time to get involved and then once you're on, you sit there and you become that yes man or woman and you say, this is what the library can do. This is what the library can do. And it's just been wonderful. It's been one, this has really been a, a, a horrible situation, a pain in the ass for me, I hate it, but it's been a wonderful opportunity for our library to really get a seat at the table, literally and figuratively. Heather, that's wonderful, I love it. Anyone else have a similar story? Just to clarify, Seth Cottle is our new director. Uh, Monica Brooks shared in the chat that she is the queen of this in terms of making a decision. She has to brush herself off and fix it. She has no mic on her end, unfortunately. Well, we miss you, Monica. Karen Goff, are you around? What, what's been going on at the um, Library Commission? Have you, like, how about within government? Has the Library Commission like had the opportunity to take any any bull by the horn? Afraid not. <laughs> the bull more we more likely get gored by the bull rather than the bull <laughs> than taking it by the horns. We sort of dance around the bull and try to make it think we're friends and get our way that way. So it, it's sort of the same type of approach. That's another and, great strategy. Um, and, and, and using and knowing how the system works. And sometimes it works that way and who you can talk to about it um, definitely helps. But yeah, it doesn't always work. <laughs> but it helps to have an approach and know some people you can, that will carry your, you know, carry your bucket up the hill sort of agreed and agreed. Um, and that that works well often and you catch more flies with honey is always a helpful attitude to have we have this it, it's sort of like your academic hierarchy we are a department of arts culture and history we are an independent agency but we're still in that little grouping thing you know how it goes and um, Randall Reed Smith is the director of arts, culture, and history. And he often says, Karen, what, what do I need to be saying when I meet with these people the next higher up? 
And recently I, I told him, I said, Randall, every time they say broadband, you say libraries. And he's been doing it. And I think that is one reason why the li public libraries were included in this Thousand Points of Light Kids Connect project. So, um, and he's all about buildings and everything. And, I, and he, I said, when they say libraries, you just tell them everything libraries do. And, and he's been doing it, and, and that's been a big help. It, it's sort of a, you know, not a real complicated way of doing it, but then hoping that if they need more details, it comes down the line and I can provide the details. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, we're at 1231. Anybody else have any last comments? Because we don't want to take up any more time. I actually have a mic now. Ah! <laughs> Good, <laughs> but because we I, want to hear from you. You're a mover and a shaker. Uh, well, I, I do think one little tidbit that has helped us a lot is when we do make a mistake, we own it, we brush ourselves off, and we find a way to fix it. And that, that really goes a long way. So it's embarrassing, but, but you, gotta, you just have to do that sometimes. It's okay because when you put yourself out there, you're going to make a mistake. And guess what? Right now, guys, people above and below are real forgiving. <laughs> so now is the time. Now is the time. And you know what? Guess what? I'll, I'll wrap up and just say this. When I say take the bull by the horns and put your ideas into action, you have a really great opportunity to change your mind if you have to. <laughs> This is a pandemic. This is where you go, you know what? We tried this and it's not working. Let's try this instead. So be ready. Be ready that not everything's going to work and that now's the perfect time to admit we got to go to plan B and you're really not going to suffer for it because everybody's going to plan B all the time. So jump on the bandwagon and just be energetic and make the change. Make the change. Thanks, Jenny. I've got to go to see if the governor's going to come on when he says he is now. <laughs> okay. All right, Oh, everybody. you've got 15 minutes. Yeah, I know, but I have lunch to eat, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody have a great weekend. Um, yes, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my email in this chat. Uh, Virginia.stevens at mail.wu.edu. And if you want to commiserate or if you want a copy of my plan, I'm not saying my plan's wonderful, but it might give you some ideas. And, um, you know, email me, talk to me, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so Good job. much. It's great. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. You. Um, I would like to point out we do have a feedback form, and I put the link in the chat. So please feel free to give feedback to us um, and our presenter. Yes, uh, additionally, please do. I have the information for our next session, which will be September 18th. So the invitation will be coming out and the registration link is there. So please consider joining us again. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to say one thing. I really like how you're having these weekly sessions. I mean, the regular sessions. I think this is awesome. Great. We're glad people are participating and we're, we're happy to do them because, and they're, like I said, they're growing in attendance and I like that we record them and, and they're on an embargo. Um, so if you register, of course, you get to observe it live and in person, but, but we are archiving them as well. So thank you for the, the feedback. Virginia, please apologize to the lawnmower. We have to have maintenance and the custodians on our side through this pandemic. <laughs> I told him, stop it, turn that thing off. <laughs> no, I heard her. She was totally get off my lawn. <laughs> All right. I knew it. I knew it. This will have to be one of those that uh, you have to go uh, buy a beer for. After you yell that was them. the best, Jenny. <laughs>